Hello, we're rolling into another episode of the DRH show. As usual, I talk to interesting people within psychology, mental health, and well being. Today, I'm joined by a writer, entrepreneur, and a motivational speaker, Joshua Kangli. Thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for having me on your wonderful show today. I'm honored to be here. It's great to have you here, Charles. So let's start off with you telling us your backstory, your trajectory in life, and how you ended up doing what you're doing. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much. And again, I'm, I'm honored to be on your show, and I'm so excited and uh, to talk with you and your audience today. So uh, about me, you know, um, I don't know what to say other than uh, fairly uh, rough childhood, to be honest with you. So I experienced a lot of um, different traumas in my early childhood, and that left a lot of uh, exploration and a lot of uh, journeys throughout my life into adulthood. Um, so that's really what I speak on today is how you, anyone, can overcome any challenges, um, whether it be in business, whether it be in, in your personal life, whatever the case may be. And some of those lessons that I learned along the way really taught me my purpose, which is to just help other people bring my message to other people and the message of other people who I consider guiding lights. I really consider people like you um, and, and other people that I've interviewed myself, um, so many wonderful people out there doing so many wonderful things. Mm -hmm. And it's my purpose to shine the light that it, um, and it's led me to doing uh, my podcast um, and writing some books. Mm -hmm. I've read a few of your works, Josh, and um, you, you keep on saying that attitude is everything. Um, can, can you talk more about this? Because some people may not say that, hang on, it's not really all about attitude. Um, it's also about, you know, your circumstances in life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, and that does matter as well. So circumstances mm -hmm. in life do play a part. Um, but I am on the side of positivity and optimism. And though that can be hard, depending mm -hmm. upon circumstances in life, mm -hmm. as it was for me, um, I think that that is, is the key. I think that your attitude alone can mm -hmm. really change the trajectory of your life um, in your personal life. And it can also change in your business life. So if you're in customer service, mm -hmm. in, um, having the right attitude can take some negative situations the customer might be experiencing um, within that uh, in any any way along the way of that transaction of business, you can change that experience to a positive with just attitude alone. And sometimes you can, if you do, you can take that experience, turn that customer to a long term, uh, repeat client or customer. But mm -hmm. I do do believe that attitude is everything. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you briefly mentioned about another aspect of what you do. You mentioned something about customer service. Um, I'm quite sure as an entrepreneur, you always get to be asked these questions. So would you agree that customer is always right? You know, that's another good question. I, I, would, say, I would say this, that customer is not always right, but they are always right. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is, you know, I've my whole experience you know in my career really bases a lot on customer service so that's why i love to speak on it and um knowing you know some experiences and i'm sure we all can kind of we think back to our own experiences you know the customer and i might not always be technically right you know so there's a misunderstanding a, a policy or a mm -hmm. location that wasn't met and maybe it wasn't met due to some misunderstanding along the way. So no, they might not always be right, but it's mm -hmm. our job as entrepreneurs, as uh, business owners, as customer service agents to make them feel right, to make them feel like they matter. So that's the important key, what I really mean by what they are, that they're always right. Because again, you can take that situation. So say for instance, there's a, a misunderstanding from a customer about a policy or about uh, some sort of mm -hmm. transactional expectation that wasn't met um, on their part. 
Yeah, you can do a couple things as an entrepreneur or business owner or customer service agent. You can you can say you can make them feel like they're wrong and say, no, I'm sorry, that's not our policy. You know, you could do that. Or the, the other thing you could do is go the other way and just listen to them and mm-hmm. provide them the the support and res- resolve that they're looking for um, in a way that can make them a, a very trustworthy and loyal customer, as a matter of fact. So there's been so many situations in my career where I have taken those situations, a very unhappy customer, a very um, displeased customer, say, for instance, and was able to just with attitude and mm-hmm. a lot of it has to do with listening and mm-hmm. making them feel valued. You can turn that, that into a long term customer who is one of your most loyal. Mm-hmm. And of course, you wrote about you wrote a book about this. It's all about you know um, teaching people how to win over customers. Um, what, what's the title of your book about this? It's the Seven Concepts of Customer Service. Mm-hmm. This all started, as a matter of fact, uh, when I was working at a job in the field uh, of customer service, and so, and it all it, it bases it's based on all my experience of customer service. Like I said, I've in many different aspects worked with. Uh, customer service support mm-hmm. and learned quite a few things and you can definitely win over customers you can win over customers um, mm-hmm. and take that negative situation and turn it into a super positive one mm-hmm. uh, and there's things that you can do that there there there's these concepts that you can actually do and I can share them with you right now if you'd like um, mm-hmm. so number one is again the attitude it's the can do attitude and that is just the attitude of, you know, I can do that. I'm willing to mm-hmm. go above and beyond. I'm willing to do my part in this situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one is captivate. We want to make sure that we're captivating our customers, grabbing their attention, mm-hmm. um, and setting ourselves apart from our competition, right? Um, connection is also very important. Being, being able to connect with your customers, your clients, uh, super important. If there's a connection, you can build upon that for long-term success. Um, care, obviously you wanna care. And that again, is making the customer feel like you care. So maybe they're wrong, maybe they know they're wrong, but if they know you care enough to listen um, and to see their side of the story or their perspective, that goes a very long way. Um, and there's also being creative, You know, being creative in your business as far as how you take care of customers just mm-hmm. adds the engagement and the fun and people want to be around that. Um, and then of course, conversion, which is the close, you know, being able to convert um, that experience to, to where, what you want the outcome to be mm-hmm. you do that you can win customers over. You can t- set yourself up for long-term success. Mm-hmm. Th- th- those are very, very um, important points. And I kind of agree with what you said about care because one thing that I think about customer service is um, it's all about empathy, you know, trying trying to put in yourself in the situation of the customer. Because, of course, whether you're in customer service, whether you're a business owner, you're, you're still a customer at one point or another. And, you know, you, you, you want to be treated the way, you know, you, you expect to receive service. Um, Josh, I just want to move on to to another point. I'm quite sure that you've been asked about this as as an entrepreneur, um, as someone who's expert in customer service. Uh, what would be your tips for um, business owners who are trying to recover from the impact of lockdown? Because you know it's not just all about customer service. Right. Yes. Good point. That's a great question. You know, th- these are interesting and, and trying times for many of us, and. Um, I will say that there are huge challenges that we have to overcome. Mm-hmm. And, but I will say, too, that along with these challenges, there's also opportunities. There's also, you know, so many opportunities during this time right now that as entrepreneurs, if you can pay attention to that if you, and, and see what's going on, see what's been successful, see what see where the see where it's moving. You could and if, if you're able to move quickly, you know, we mm-hmm. talk about pivoting a lot. We talk about being able to move. Here's the key. If you can move to meet the new expectation, mm-hmm. and if you quickly and if you can do it better than your competitors, then you got something there. You really do. So, yes, there's challenges. Um, one thing I would do to, to overcome the challenges is to spend more time really with your customers, the ones that you already have, like your loyal customers, 
now's the time to double down on that engagement. Um, mm -hmm. Zoom calls are super important right now for all of us. So getting on a Zoom call, checking in with them, you know, mm -hmm. how's it going? How can I help more during this time? So I would put the focus more on the retaining who you have already in your clientele and taking care of the, your customer base before moving on to, to new clients right now. Um, and I also would focus on communication, not only with uh, your clients and customers, but also your team. Your, you know, right now your team needs you. If you're an entrepreneur, if you're a business owner, CEO, your team needs you. So the people out there helping you communicate, double down on engagement. Um, and I would say that, you know, entrepreneurs out there know, and you should know, like just being able to move quick, the key is moving to the, to meet the new expectation, whatever that looks like. Mm -hmm. Now, Josh, as you mentioned earlier, you're also a motivational speaker. So if you could just, um, t tell us more about your role as a motivational speaker, what sort of topics you cover and what sort of people usually, you know, avail of your service as a speaker. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I'll be honest and all candor here. I'm very new in that space. So mm -hmm. um, do it. I love to speak. And what I speak about is my story. And my story is, again, how I overcame um, mm -hmm. some real trauma, some real pain, some real difficult times in my childhood. And that if I can do that, mm -hmm. if I fire that in you. So I talk a lot about motivation, inspiration and mm -hmm. A lot of it has also to do with success, what success looks like for you and how can we do that? How can we get you there? So that's mm -hmm. a lot of what I talk about. People looking for um, mm -hmm. development, people looking for a, a way to grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you mentioned something about success and that's something that you work a lot on. So um, how would you define success? You know, that's another great question, too. Um, I think that we all define success differently. And mm -hmm. I think that the trouble if we try to um, make success a one thing, like an end result. I don't think that it, uh, success is an end result. Um, I think success is. So let me put it this way. If you are um, using your gifts, your talents like you are today, you know, talking with people, sharing their messages, um, to spread the word of, mm -hmm. of great works. I think, you know, you're on your, you're, you're successful. If you are using your gifts and your talents to help other people, mm -hmm. you are successful. If you're a hardworking, unbelievable, amazing mother, you are successful. Mm -hmm. If you are, um, if you're on your path to using your purpose, your passions to help other people, I think that's successful. And that's what success looks like to me. Mm -hmm. I think also another element of success, if you achieve your goal, um, you know, uh, it might be your goal to, you know, as a YouTuber to have 20,000 subscribers in, in a year. So that's success for me. That, well, at least for me. Um, yeah. That has a lot to do with it, too. So, yes, obtaining goals that mm -hmm. has to do with success and that can keep you on that momentum as well. Yep. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, let, let's try to link um, two elements of what you talk about, um, success and positivity. So how do you think these two are intertwined? I think it's I think it is so important. Mm -hmm. I think it is intertwined so deep at so many levels. Um, mm -hmm. Positivity a lot. I know it's kind of a, a become a buzzword and, and maybe a, a filler to a lot of people. It's mm -hmm. not all. It's not. It's definitely not all. But it is huge. I think positivity alone can mm. get you fast track to your success. Um, mm. Goal is a certain amount of um, subscribers or, or uh, you know, whatever the case may be. Mm. Having attitude um, can really get you there faster than you think. Um, so I know it may seem kind of a vague thing, but positivity, having that right attitude, it mm. just puts you in alignment with what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Can you also talk to us, what about, you know, because they say, I, I hear from, not necessarily from you, but from other motivational speakers, that it's also important that you you are selective of the people that you hang out with. Is that true? Oh, yes, that is very true. That is very, very true. You know, they say you are a sum of the people that you surround yourself with. And mm -hmm. so, true. Um, it's true in my life. You know, 
like I said, I had to, in, in my early childhood, I grew up with very negativity, a lot of negativity. And that's why I'm so the opposite now, because I see the, I see the contrast and what it can do. But I grew up around very negative uh, people and situations. My friends ended up being very negative people as well. Um, mm -hmm. I learned, it's when I learned that I have to cut ties. And sometimes that is super hard to do. But if they are negative, and if they are not supporting you, believing in you, um, mm -hmm. caring enough about you to put you where you need to be, then you really need to consider just cutting that out, out of your life because you really are who you hang around with, who your friends are in your circle of friends. And if you can elevate that, you're elevating yourself. Um, and it's just really about putting yourself around the, the people that you want to be most like. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what, what would you say if some people think that, you know, like cutting ties, that's kind of snobbish, you know? Um, that, that's the downside to that. To that. What, so what would you say to that? It is. It, it is snobbish, and, and I can definitely see how they would say that. Mm -hmm. And however, for mm -hmm. me, it was necessary. You know, maybe I'm just speaking in my case alone. It was so necessary for me to. Now, I will say I do talk to some of these people. Um, mm -hmm. you know, you, sometimes you have to because sometimes they're your family. Mm -hmm. And um, but it's so important that you set boundaries. If that's the case, then you should set boundaries at least and make them clear. And again, if they're not respecting those boundaries, you really should consider how this energy is going to impact you. Mm -hmm. uh, and for your for your own sanity and your own self so for me i did had to do, i had to do that in some cases mm -hmm. you, you mentioned about positivity you mentioned about the importance of hanging out with the right people um and trying trying to motivate yourself are there any other key principles of success yeah i mean i would say there's for me there's seven and imagine there's seven for me there's seven and i can go through mm -hmm. them with if you would like please do. Um, I will and imagine I can I, I think about it like this if you use all these seven principles you, and you can use them in conjunction you mm -hmm. can all seven cylinders and mm -hmm. you will see amazing trajectory in your life if you just use one of them you're going to see an impact in a difference as well like positivity if you just change your attitude um, and wake up being more grateful for what you have mm -hmm. and where you want to be you're going to see a huge impact in your life um three the powerful three are purpose and positivity so having a purpose finding your purpose is huge um and passion passion living with passion is like that turbo engine um mm. that be behind you propelling you to your future so you have purpose passion and positivity if you mm. can do those three you are going to see significant results in your life. Now, some other ones to, to, that are very important as well um, are planning. You want, to be, you want to be planning as well. So you're planning, you're setting goals, mm -hmm. um, what that looks like to you. Now, what's important about planning is those plans might change over time. So you might be getting into YouTube and you might be having these really goal, these huge goals. Um, right. But how you get to your goals and, and some things might come up along the way that might change how you get there. You just have, have to navigate. Um, but your end goal should never change. Your, your vision, that never changes. Uh, also, persistence, having, having the, the ability to be persistent, never give up on your goals, your dreams, and to keep going forward even in the face of, mm -hmm. like being right now, um, the challenges we're facing right now. Just have the persistence to change, to navigate, to pivot, like we talked about, and mm -hmm. keep um, patience. Patience is, is one that is so underestimated. Mm -hmm. um, but if you can have patience yourself, that is going to give you so much confidence. Because when you have patience, you're really telling yourself that you have confidence in yourself enough to wait for the right time or to, mm -hmm. to, to be still and be in this moment because you know what's coming. So patience is huge. Uh, and then the last one is the big picture. Again, just having that big picture of what your success mm -hmm. looks like for you, what you want to achieve and where you want to be, and, and using all those to get there.
Mm -hmm. Now, let, let's go back to what you already mentioned earlier about, you know, be, being successful. Um, the, our, our conversation actually reminds me of one article on Psychredge. Um, some people might already know that I run a website called Psychredge and I publish all sorts of articles. Anyway, on, on one of those articles, um, what, one of the authors said that even if you give your 110%, you're not going to be successful because there's going to be barriers. Um, there's going to be lack of opportunity. Whereas you, you're coming from um, the standpoint of, you know, trying to motivate yourself, trying to hang out with the right people. So uh, how, how do you, you know, re reconcile these two um, standpoints that, you know, you, you can actually be successful if you just kind of motivate yourself and just try to, you know, um, maximize the the opportunities but where are some people they say no um so sometimes it's just lack of opportunities that's true i, I would say where i sit in with all that is mm -hmm. that's where i started there mm -hmm. there was no opportunity for me there, mm -hmm. there was none. um and and that's the real the real thing here is that i mm -hmm. i be here today i mm -hmm. literally should not be here today talking with you but that's the beautiful thing is that i am and i am because i did maximize all my opportunities i did lever i leveraged everything that i had even when i didn't have anything you know sometimes um you what you have to do is see and right now we live in the in information age right so mm -hmm. you can go on youtube and find awesome people like you talking to awesome people and you mm -hmm. can get inspired that way get motivated that way uh, I read a lot of books. That was my escape. And so I learned so much from these amazing authors who could take me and motivate me and uplift me in ways that I've never been before. Mm -hmm. That was really the catalyst of, of how this all started. Um, and then I started realizing, I think it comes back to being grateful, being mm -hmm. grateful for what you do have. Yes, there might not be opportunity right now. Yes, you might be experiencing some challenges with this COVID situation. Mm -hmm. It's not ideal. But being, again, being patient, being grateful for what you do have, because there's also blessings that have come out of this. You know, some of us are spending more time with our families. Some mm -hmm. of us are learning new skills. Some of us are changing and pivoting. So it's it's maximizing what you do have available and, and just determination, pers perseverance keeps going forward. Um, and you will eventually that it compounds itself. that momentum will lead mm. you to where you want to be and you will be surprised just at the oppor opportunities that do come and sometimes they're always already there it's just once you're in alignment like this mm -hmm. it just tells you forward that's mm -hmm. kind of my take on on that mm -hmm. uh, yeah i i agree that it's all about really trying to look for other ways to you know maximize your skills like what you've said you know um, not because we're in lockdown, it should be a reason for us to, you know, stop improving ourselves. And of course, this is one of the key message that you're trying to convey to people. That's why you've created a podcast. If I remember it right, the name is The Success Show. So, right. if you, yeah, if you could just talk, talk to us through about what The Success Show is, how you started and what sort of people you talk to with. Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's been a fun part of my journey and... Mm -hmm. This all started with the book, The Seven Principles of Success. You know, mm -hmm. after that, um, I was done with the book. I was like, well, hey, I have the book. Well, now what? Now what do I do? I wanted to keep the conversation going. And again, I was in that super alignment, super motivated. And so uh, I, what I did is I started a podcast based on the book. And it was The Seven Principles of Success podcast series. And so... Uh, once I was done with that, I went, you know, I went through all that and I was done with that. So I'm like, what do I do next? And so then I decided, OK, let's do a show called Table Talks um, off of the success, the success show and mm -hmm. let keep the conversation going. And that's when I started reaching out to other people to have mm -hmm. them on the show. And that's when I really realized, wow, I'm here to shine the light on other people's messages because I think we learn from other people as human beings, we learn from them, uh, from the stories and their experience to help our own journeys and our own growth as well. And that's where it all started. And so um, right now we're I'm wrapping up season three of the mm -hmm. show. Um, it's been so 
cool and amazing talking with so many different people from all over the world and just sharing their experiences with 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 us it's like one you know to just hopefully leave something that somebody will be inspired by and motivated by mm -hmm. Now, Josh, you've done a lot of work on customer service and trying to motivate people, and you also had your, your, your podcast. Now, is that particular individual was the greatest influence um, to your work, or is there a particular book which really, you know, um, spur you into action? <laughs> yeah, there's been so many. There's been so many, um, so many inspirations. And I think that's key is being, you know, again, grateful. And being inspired, letting yourself be inspired just by the smallest things. And maybe it's because I needed it, but um, there's there's a teacher I had in high school who mm -hmm. had the wherewithal and the keen ability to be like, he must have been super emotional and intelligent because he picked up on something about me. Um, and, and just one sentence or two sentences, he gave me such an uplifting mm -hmm. message I needed at that time. And it changed my life forever. Like, I don't think he knew that, but it's so impactful for me that even today I'm talking about it. So um, <laughs> teachers, um, my my mother was very inspiring in the way that she was very hardworking, doing the best that she could do. My father was very inspiring in that he, he was an entrepreneur. And so I learned a lot about entrepreneurism at a very young age and what that could do and what that feels like. Um, beyond that, books have been a huge inspiration for me. Um, I read a lot of, you know, Carnegie, he's been a, a lot of, uh, of uh, you know, he's been super impactful to me as far as my attitude goes and what I do. So, I mean, just right now, I'll be honest, right now, who inspires me right now is Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, mm -hmm. He is super inspiring. If you, you know, if you're out there listening, check him out. He's mm -hmm. a superman. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'll be honest, I've heard of... Um... Some people say call, call him Gary V. I've heard of his name, a lot yeah. Of times, but yeah, but I haven't watched any of his um, videos on YouTube or or anything on Twitter. But I, I think I have to check him out. Um, so, um, Josh, you, you you've definitely done a lot of work, done important work. So, what's the kind of like um, big message that you want the public to take away from from what you're doing? You know, what I want them to know is. It's so important to to be inspired. And I think that now more than ever, we need inspiration. We need positivity. We need to uh, hear these messages. So again, you know, thank you for people like you who are shining lights on this and, and using their gifts and talents to the people. So I think that's so important. I think, you know, my message to the public is, look, even through tough times, you know, there is an end and you can get through it. You really can. Do, do not fall into despair. Do not fall into the trap of negativity. Mm -hmm. It's not ideal. It, sometimes it's not ideal. Like you mentioned, op, lack of opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. Those do exist. They're real things. And mm -hmm. um, I think if we are better people at supporting one another, helping mm -hmm. one another, um, and being there for each other, mm -hmm people would have more resources, more tools at their disposal. And sometimes you, you have to just go out there and look for them um, and, in, in whatever way you can. I've been in a very despairing situation and I had to claw, fight, and, and, and just pick myself up to, to find something, you know, and that's I found books. I found books and it just took my life uh, in a whole new way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is, it's really important that you, you are motivated. It's really important that you have grit and be, be resourceful. It actually reminds me of, um, I used to have a university lecturer and he used to say, um, be like a mosquito. If you can't find a hole, make one. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, so I, I think that's really important. You know, if you, if you want to be successful in life, you can't just blame it for lack of resources because, yeah, ultimately, yeah, there, there are certain, you know, barriers, but ultimately you're, you're the captain of your own ship. Now, um, you, you've been working on, you know, trying to motivate people about success, you know, um, trying to help them um, be good with customer service, but I'm quite sure that along the way, you've come across a number of misconceptions. So if you kind of like address those misconceptions. Absolutely. You know, I think that we are often misconceived about the idea of success. Um, mm -hmm. 
you're mentioning success looks so different for so many different people for all of us it, it's our own thing and what that looks like is different um but i think one misconception is like i kind of talked about earlier it's not necessarily an end game yes there are small mm -hmm. uh, successes along the way you know like you said reaching a goal that's huge reaching even small goals reaching them are huge because it, it means you're on your way you're in alignment and you're you have this momentum behind you so just keep that going celebrate all the small successes um but i don't think it's ever an end thing so um as long as you are on your trajectory to using your gifts and talents to help other people um you're being grateful and humble and what you do mm -hmm. doing the very best that you can do i think you're successful i think you're you're successful and you're on your way to more successes whatever that looks like to you mm -hmm. Now, just for one, for, for those who want to follow your um, your path, who wants to be a motivational speaker, um, could you give us some good starting point, like in, in terms of resource? I, I'm sure your website and your books are excellent resource, but um, other than Gary V, um, what what would you say a good starting point to explore more about positivity and about success? Yeah, I mean, the great thing is now, like we were saying, we live in a world now where, mm -hmm. you know, we really have. So much available in our own pocket so um there's a plethora of things that you can do to start with i would i would pick up um i know this is old school but i would pick up anything from dale carnegie it's so mm -hmm. powerful even his words still ring true still mm -hmm. day so pick i would start there at a, at a basic starting point mm -hmm. for a resource but you could also go on to um you know online to youtube and find so many people <laughs> great resources there too um i would start with training yourself to be grateful being grateful for what you have because at the, at the very least of it we're here today i'm thankful that i'm here today and Thanks. though i be where i want to be right now i know that i'm good enough to start mm -hmm. and going and I, that makes me happy and excited and once you get that feeling going it, i'm telling you uh, it's a, it compounds and it, it takes you in places you mm -hmm. never. Mm -hmm. And what you said about being grateful, that's actually back up by science. There's a number of research that really shows that, you know, if you if you try to be grateful, um, there's an um, there's also a concept, you know, try to have a like a gratitude jar and try try to list things that you're grateful for for the day. And it really, you know, try, tries to create um, a positive feeling, um, just like what you said. I, I'm sorry, you, you were about to say something. Oh, no, no, no. Go ahead. No, you're absolutely right. I was just going to say you're absolutely right. Yeah. I was just going to ask you at this point, um, Josh, um, if you're not a motivational speaker, if you're not an author, what do you think you would be doing? That's a tough one. That's a really tough one because I think that um, I think that I I'd always would be writing. You know, I think I'd always would be writing and I'd always be um, motivating. So even if I'm just speaking to my family or friends, I think mm -hmm. I would still be doing that. Mm -hmm. um, one interesting thing about me, though, is um, I always saw myself as being uh, a baseball player. So, mm -hmm. again, you, you know, you have these these ideas of what you're going to do, and they don't always come uh, to fruition. But um, I think, you know, if I was to do anything else, I'd probably be playing baseball professionally. But still, I'd probably be writing and still being motivated. Mm -hmm. Perhaps writing about um, baseball and how to be a good uh, um, baseball player. But um, Josh, how do you relax and what's your distressing outlet? This is a good one. We, especially right now, we, and you know what? I struggle with this. I struggle myself taking that time out. Um, I'm a very go, go, go type person. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of, you know, multiple pans mm -hmm. of fire here, but it's so important to, to relax and it's so important to de-stress, especially right now so one thing that i has always worked for me and i'm getting back into this but working out being physically active mm -hmm. i think that's so helpful um to releasing you know things in your body and it just calms you down it it, mm -hmm. it, uh, it takes your mind off things and it's very effective for me so even taking a walk getting outside mm -hmm. fresh air taking a walk um sometimes picking up the phone and calling a loved one or an old friend just to touch base um, you know, can be also very um, de-stressful. Uh, music has always been something for me that can mm -hmm. uh, set my mood in a different way. And, 
you know, so depending on my mood, I'll put some music on and that's very relaxing as well. So I would say, you know, physical, physical activity, um, an exercise, uh, taking a walk, reconnecting with a loved one and um, music. Brilliant. And where do you see yourself 10 years from now? Wow, 10 years from now, um, I hope to be still doing what I'm doing and I hope that I'm helping more and more people. So hopefully 10 years from now, I'm able to help more and more people. Brilliant. And finally, Josh, um, what else is in the pipeline? Um, tell us about your books, any upcoming events. Yeah, so I'm really excited right now because we, I have a new show coming out. Um, right. This podcast has really transformed things. And I have a new show. It's going to be on YouTube. Uh, hopefully in the next couple months uh, will be a release date. Um, but it's called Mind Shift. It's going to be called Mind Shift. And it'll be on YouTube. So that's in the works right now. Um, and then also the Mind Shift book. Um, you know, I had a book in mind for 2020. And obviously with 2020 that that, that came, it's, it's been so <laughs> all expected. So I had to look at it a little bit differently and change some things. But I do have a book coming out, Mind Shift, uh, this year. And it's going to be a co-authorship. So many of the people who I've talked to, um, they're going to provide some really great tools and resources in their story to help us through all this, how, how yeah. we can get with this. Oh, that's brilliant. So it's, it's like a, a collection of um, success stories um, from, from the yeah. people that you've spoken. Brilliant. Well, um, Josh, it's been an insightful conversation with you, but unfortunately, our time is up. And but thank you for sharing your time and your expertise. I look forward to hearing more about your work and also about your podcast. Thank you. I really want to say thank you for having me on the show. Thank you. Thank you.